How you doing everyone? Greetings! Welcome back to the basement after a very, very long sabbatical where I really haven't been making any videos at all. But let me just tell you before we start, don't be expecting high production value anymore and don't be expecting fancy editing, not that I ever really had any. But all that kind of stuff is going out and I couldn't spend near as long making videos as I used to. These are all going to be kind of one or two takes at the very most and throw them together and get them out to you and that way I'm not going to use up all my time kind of making videos like I used to before and hopefully I won't wear myself out. But anyway, I'm sure you are all sick and tired of hearing about Bob and the alien fireflies. So today's video is going to be a bridge from Bob kind of back to hardware. That's what we're going to do. We're going to try and get back to hardware and leave programming behind a bit because I've done an awful lot. Actually, it's pretty much all I've done in any of the videos I made over the last year and a half or so. But what I want to say is that I finished up with my conversion of Bob and the Alien Fireflies over to the Color Computer. So I've got a version of that that will run on the com Color Computer 1, 2 and 3. And I've tested it myself fairly thoroughly. I found a few bugs, I've ironed them out and it seems to be working quite well. So I sent it out for beta testing yesterday and we'll see if there's any major bugs found or anything and fix them up. But in the meantime, what I did was Known that there's very little difference between the Dragon 32 and the color computer, I decided to convert over to make the game run on the Dragon. So kind of do a conversion over is apparently easy enough to do. Actually, in many, many situations, a uh, machine language program will run exactly the same on both systems with no conversion whatsoever. But if the program is kind of small or if the programmer is lazy, or like me, doesn't know a hell of a lot, there is a little bit of tweaking and conversion that needs to be done afterwards in order to get it run on the other system. So, like I say, I've compiled both of them. I've tested both of them on emulators. I've tested the Cocoa version on real hardware. I know that's pretty good, but I haven't tested my Dragon version on real hardware. So I would like to convert this Cocoa to a Dragon and we will... Uh, We'll see if it runs on it pretty much, but there's one or two little things. You see, any of the Coco testing I've been doing, I've been using my Coco SDC in order to put my disk image onto an SD card and to load it up on the Coco, no trouble at all. Now this guy is compatible with a Dragon computer as well, but the, the problem is, or well, the thing is, the Dragon disk, disk images are slightly different than the Coco ones. And I know absolutely nothing about them. And to tell you the truth, I couldn't be arsed learning about them. So the easiest way for me to get my Dragon version across to real hardware was to make a cassette file or a CAS file and convert it to a WAV, which I copied onto a tape here. And we're going to load it from the tape recorder onto the Coco converted Dragon thing and see does that thing work. And in the process, we look at how to put the thing onto a cassette as well while we're doing it. These are cheap little cassettes. Don't spend stupid money on cassettes on eBay. Go into a second hand shop, buy them for 20 cents each. Guaranteed, they work just as well. So let's do that now, eh? Let's convert this guy over and let's see. Yeah, yeah, see, crap production value. Let's do it. Okay, so here I am after moving in real, real close to my color computer and you probably can just see my fat head in the thing, but anyway, what harm? Let me tell you, really the only difference between a Coco 2 and the Dragon 32 is its very soul. And what I mean by its very soul is that Puties have their souls contained on ROM chips like this. It's actually the firmware on the system, the system ROM, that determines if this runs pretty much like a Coco or like a Dragon. It's one of the main differences. There's Another difference as well is keyboard, which you'll see when we convert over. And the other difference is the cartridge port, which really doesn't matter too much. But inside in the Coco, there is a 16 kilobyte ROM containing Color Basic 1.3 and Extended Color Basic 1.1. And that's what makes a Coco a Coco. This guy here has the ROM code for a Dragon 32. And this is what makes a Dragon 32 a Dragon 32. So in essence, all we need to do is remove the cover of our Coco computer and put it over here where it won't get broken or damaged. 
And this chip right here, I'm not sure if you can see it. Can you see it? Oh yeah, maybe you can. This chip right here is the ROM chip inside in the Coco. We're going to whip that out. We're going to replace it with the other one I showed you. And presto changeo, as if by magic, this will behave exactly like a Dragon 32. Let me show you. We take a ROM extractor. I put my fat arm in front of the screen camera thing. We pull this guy out. And then making sure we have this oriented the right way around, we shove it in. Uh, this is now a Dragon 32. Here, if you don't believe me, let me show you. I bring it up to the screen here, and we'll power on. Look at, look, 1982 Dragon Data Limited, 16K basic interpreter. Completely different than what it had before. Anyway, let me show you it working now. Okay, so after you've done this kind of conversion across by changing the ROM, there's one or two other differences, and one of them is kind of major. One of the minor differences is the cartridge port on the side is ever so slightly different, but still it won't impede you in any way from running cartridges between the two systems. However, however, the little keyboard matrix, or the two matrices on, between the color computer and the Dragon 32, are different. So what you tap on the keyboard here will give a different letter on the screen. So for example, if I tap A-Z-E-R-T, I get 1J5BD. So it kind of makes it, without changing the keyboard matrix around, it kind of makes it very, very kind of unpleasant to use. But what we can do, because we're only going to be using two commands today, one to load the game and one to run it. So I've kind of made a cheat sheet. And what I need to type in in order to Oh, in order to backspace is different too. In order to get this to run is C load M. And the way we do that is S down arrow space QT left arrow and then shift and B twice. Got my C load M. So what we're going to do now is Bob is on this cassette. Let's throw it into the tape recorder thing here. We'll press enter. Enter is actually the same still. It goes searching and I pressed play. Now, that's going to take a few minutes to load. So while we're waiting for it to load, I invite you to accompany me upstairs to where I've written this program thing. And I will show you how I managed to kind of put it onto the tape from my Linux PC. Yeah. So here I am upstairs, I've got VCC, my color computer emulator opened up, and the only actual file I need is this guy here. It's a disk image of the Dragon version of Bob. So what I've done is I've mounted that disk image in drive zero of my emulator. When I type dir, it will give me a directory list of what's on that disk. And what we're going to do is we're going to load this program up. So load M, Dragon Bob one. So we'll let that load up. Now the very next thing that we want to do is we want to see where this program actually goes in memory. So we go to our debugger and we go to memory display and we can scroll down here. We ignore the beginning part, but you see there's all empty space here. We'll scroll down through the empty space until we actually hit something. And here we see at hex address 3600 that we've got data. So this is the start address of the program we've just loaded up of Bob. So we want to take a note of that, hex 3600. And we carry on scrolling down until we hit the end of it, which is here at hex 7580. So those two addresses we want to keep in mind. Next thing we want to do is to create a virtual cassette. So I'll just go to create new document and we'll create an empty document. And I'll call it bob.cas. So there we go, we've got, oh, I did it wrong, hang on. Let me rename it again, I put in that A that didn't happen. There we go, so we've got bob.cas created. We'll go back into VCC here, and what we will do is we'll go into configuration and go to our tape drive here. And what I want to do is I want to mount that bob.cas image. So now that's ready to be recorded too. Now at the moment, the size of the bob.cas file is zero bytes, so there's absolutely nothing in it. 
And now what we want to do is we want to save this Dragon Bob 1 that we loaded from disk previously onto this cassette. So we're going to use our C save M command. If the keyboard would work properly, there we go. So cassette save M, we give it a name, we'll call it Bob Cass. You can call it whatever you want. And what we want to do is we want to give it the start address, the end address, and the executable address of our program. So you'll remember the start address was hex 3600. So we put a comma and H is how you tell the color computer that it's a hexadecimal number that's going to follow. So and H 36000, that's our start address. Our end address then will be and H and we said it was 7580. Yeah, that's right. And H seven five eight O. And finally, you want to give it the start address or the executable address. Now, I know the executable address of this program is the same as the start address because I wrote it. So what we'll give it is and H three six. Oh, oh, the same again. There we go. So now what we want to do is we want to record on our tape and press enter. And what's happening now is what used to happen years and years ago when you had a real tape recorder there. This emulator is saving out to a virtual cassette drive. So it's actually saving the information it has in memory onto that little bob.cas file that we created just here a minute or so ago. So when this process is finished, which takes about two minutes, the bob.cas file we created will contain the data, cassette data of Bob and the Alien Fireflies for the Dragon version. Then all we have to do is use a little program to turn it into a WAV file and we can put it on our phone or whatever and feed it straight into the Coco computer. Or you could do like I did and connect the phone to a tape recorder and record it onto tape first. And that is how you make a virtual cassette or a web file of a program that you have in an So now that you know how to put stuff onto a tape in this day and age when people don't even know what tapes are anymore, let's have a look at how this game runs on a dragon. Yeah, let's have a look and see. And I'll show you the game at the same time. I hope to Christ this works. Anyway, what we need to type in order to get EXEC to get this thing to run is U8US, U8US, and we've got EXEC. Ah, see, it's coming up exactly the same as it did on the old Coco. Now, again, I'm after putting in kind of a few bits and pieces extra into this that the Atari version didn't have. I've got the story kind of integrated into the program so it can't get lost. I've got the instructions on how to play the actual game, and I've also got thanks to a few people in there as well. And there's still the two different game versions, one player and two player. So again, because the keyboard matrix is different, in order to start a one player game, I'm not going to be pressing one. I'm going to have to press A. And actually it kind of makes sense that a two player game, I press B. But let's have a little look and see what it's all about. Put you there now. So here is the culmination of kind of eight months of work to kind of write this thing anyway here we are look at bob and he moving around look at him he can go in all eight directions up down left and right and he has to pick up these little fireflies before they kind of turn well they'll turn red and then they'll explode and that'll be game over for him but as we collect them i've got my little jar of bugs down here at the bottom of the screen and each firefly that we collect will appear in the jar with the color he had when we collected him and at the end of the level, we'll get bonus points uh, based on if we've got how many lines of exactly the same color or if we've got an entire block of bugs of the same color. Now, the other change I've kind of made, apart from the graphics looking a little bit better, we've got a little animated bug here. We've got a much more hedgehoggy looking kind of Bob Hedgehog. But I've also put in some levels. So you'll notice that it kind of starts easy enough to play. The lines here are moving slowly enough and the opening is quite wide in them. So it gives you a little bit of time to kind of get used to it. Every time you've collected 16 fireflies, 
what you'll get is you'll get a kind of end of le level kind of status screen more or less it tells you you've done a good job and then it tells you how many lines of blue guys yellow guys and red guys you've gotten plus any extra points you get based on that so every time you clear a level you'll get 16 points when you started the game you had zero we're after getting 16 so we've gotten 16 points and uh, yeah we didn't get any of these bonus things so we'll move on to level two ah it's a little actually I, i'll tell you there is a difference between the dragging keyboard using this maybe it's the way i've programmed it but it seems it's not as responsive on the keyboard there when i pressed it it didn't come on straight away i had to keep the key pressed down for a second or two okay well anyway there are two ways like i say you can die in this game you can hit one of those beams and you'll get teleported away or a firefly can turn red and then explode and you see here i'm after getting a full line of blue guys so what what we'll see we'll see if that actually reports that back at the end of um at the end of this level we'll see if it reports back and says you got one line of blue so you get a few extra points just to see if that's working in this version so there we go yeah it's telling us well done bob you cleared the level you were hungry or whatever crap i decided to put in there it says you got one blue line which gives you four extra points plus the 16 points that we had for clearing the level is 20 points plus the 16 that we had previously so now we've got 36 points and we move on to level three and i was much more responsive that time on the keyboard but there you go we're that's pretty much bob that's pretty much what we're doing this here is eight months of learning assembly more or less <laughs> it's it's an all right little game but i'll tell you i have learned a hell of a lot from making it and there you go so what else do i want to share with you in this episode apart from the fact that bob is dead yeah well he's not dead he just kind of got scared and he ran away see so there we go your final score and do i want to try again uh how do i do no on this keyboard i have no idea what no is anyway it doesn't matter the game is working the dragon version as well loading from cassette onto kind of fake dragon hardware but it's good enough to show it should work on a real dragon and work properly so if you're interested if you have a coco or a dragon or if you just want to play it on on an emulator from today in about two weeks time it should be out and available for your downloading pleasure yeah there you go so anyway until the next episode which do you know i'm going to do quite a few episodes on um you know these kind of cartridge things because i've got a few I'm going to do a few on these kind of things for the Amstrad and C64 and all that kind of stuff. And we'll do that kind of stuff nice and quick and not into what you call it. Because like I say, guys, I love Zia's and everything, but I have learned that this whole YouTube thing, while fun, you can get quite enough of it. So I'm going to just keep it to when I make a video, it'll take an hour to make that video and that's that. So there you go. This is the end of today's video. Have a lovely week or fortnight or whatever, and we'll see you soon enough. All right, see you then. Bye bye.